Thanks to Moft for sponsoring today's video. So I've been a heavy user of the iPad over the last 10 years. In fact, many of you probably know me from some of the iPad videos that I've made on this channel. So many people continue to overlook the potential that the iPad has with its software. So in this video, I wanted to share some of the best tips and tricks for iPadOS that I've picked up along the way. These tips are designed to be specific to iPadOS as opposed to being generic iOS crossovers. If you're interested in general iOS tips, I've got a separate video covering that on this channel. Also, if any of you are interested in this wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it in the description. So first up, if your iPad supports the new Apple Pencil Pro, you can actually customize the functionality assigned to the haptic feedback button. So by default, pressing on the side of the pencil will open up this mini toolbar menu. However, if we head into the settings app and into the Apple Pencil page, we can customize the button to our liking. So we can map it to all sorts of functions, including Siri shortcuts. So I currently have mine mapped to opening up the Adobe Lightroom app. So a lot of the times when I'm just sat on the couch, I can quickly open up the Lightroom app with a single press and begin editing all of the photos that you see on my Instagram and Twitter pages. And yeah, using this shortcut just gives me quick and easy access to this app whenever I need it. Now for all of you who don't own an Apple Pencil Pro, on most recent iPad models, if you have your iPad's display turned off and you tap on the screen with the pencil, it will open up a brand new note, which you can scribble quick notes on. The iPad will still be locked, so you don't have to worry about anyone breaking into your device. But yeah, I find it's perfect for quickly capturing down ideas when they come to you. You know, it basically turns your iPad into a digital napkin. And it's one of the reasons why I view accessories like the Apple Pencil as being almost essential to unlocking the full iPad experience, because there is literally so much that you can do with this device. However, you can take the experience one step further with another accessory that I want to show you, which is the brand new Moft Dynamic Folio case. This is the lightest dynamic working setup for the iPad, and what sets it apart from other folio cases is its origami-inspired one-piece design, which lets you unlock over 20 different viewing angles. Probably my favorite mode is the dual screen mode, which tilts your iPad to 15 degrees whilst making space for a second device, like a smartphone to be mounted on the top. This comes in super handy whenever I'm editing photos on Lightroom on my desk and want to watch a Man United game or a movie on my phone to the side, or if I want to take a video call on my phone whilst taking notes on the iPad. There's also the floating theater mode, which angles the iPad at 60 degrees, but with three inches of elevation. Now, this is quite important because you'll see that with most other folio cases out there, they don't have any elevation. So you're constantly having to stare down at your iPad, which isn't great for your neck. But with the dynamic folio case, you know, I can comfortably use my iPad as a second screen on my desk or to consume content whilst I'm prepping my meals. And with a single push, I can place the case into the floating creation mode, which angles the iPad at 30 degrees with two inches of elevation. It's perfect for writing and jotting down notes, especially with the modular pencil holder, which magnetically attaches to the back of the case to support the Apple Pencil while still allowing it to charge, with a ruler included. And if you're looking to consume content in portrait mode, Moft also have a vertical reading mode, which is perfect for hands-free scrolling, either on a desk or on the sofa like a Kindle as well as a 60 degree lap mounted angle that gives a comfortable experience for reading or writing with your iPad. Overall, this is probably one of the most enjoyable iPad accessories I've ever used. I think it's something that more case providers out there need to do because it is nearly impossible to get this level of customizability in such a light package elsewhere. And on top of that, the outside of the case is crafted from a custom vegan leather material that feels super premium. For those of you who are interested in the dynamic folio, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Continuing with the Apple Pencil tips, one tip that a lot of people don't know is that if you take your pencil and drag up from the left corner, it lets you quickly take a screenshot, which you can mark up and annotate as usual. And if you perform the same gesture from the right hand side, it will open up a mini quick note window. Also a fun fact, I think this might be one of the only instances in which you can have a window permanently hover over another window inside of iPadOS. Next up, we have the ability to fit more content onto your screen by adjusting the screen resolution. 
So to do this, we go into settings, into display and brightness, then tap on display zoom and set it to more space. Enabling this will make all of the UI on your iPad slightly smaller, which may look slightly weird at first. However, your eyes will eventually get used to this and you'll appreciate having the extra display space for things like multitasking. I find this feature is particularly useful on smaller iPad models like the 11 inch because text on the 11 inch can often feel quite small, especially when I'm using the Magic Keyboard. Speaking of the Magic Keyboard, there are a number of keyboard shortcuts that I would highly recommend learning for the iPad. The first involves using Spotlight Search to quickly search for stuff on the web. So if I open up Spotlight Search by pressing Command and Space and begin typing out a search query, I can hit Command and B to open up a page in Safari for that result. I use this trick all the time when I want to quickly search for something on the web. It just eliminates the need to open up Safari every single time. If you're a user of Stage Manager on the iPad, one annoying issue you might come across is when trying to open a new window, the OS throws the window into another stage and you have to do this annoying thing of dragging that original window back in. Thankfully, there is a keyboard shortcut to get around this. You simply hold onto the shift key whilst clicking on the app icon and it will open that window in your current stage. Now, if you're struggling to remember all of these keyboard shortcuts, there is a trick that you can use. By pressing and holding on the command key, it will open up a menu of different shortcuts for specific apps on your iPad. It's something I really wish the Mac had because I tend to forget a lot of the more complicated shortcuts like pasting your formatting or opening up the tab bar on the side. So it's nice to have quick access to these shortcuts whenever you need them. Another setting you can adjust with the Magic Keyboard is the speed of the cursor. So I find that the cursor by default is quite slow on the iPad, especially if you've got your iPad hooked up to a large external monitor. So what we can do is we can head into settings, into general, trackpad and mouse, and adjust the cursor speed to our liking. Now, one of my favorite all time features on the iPad is universal control. So essentially the way this works is that if you own an iPad and a Mac running Mac OS Monterey or later, you can use your Mac's keyboard and mouse on your iPad by dragging it to the side. Now, I won't lie, this feature doesn't always work as intended. You know, sometimes the Bluetooth signal just isn't strong enough uh, for the Mac and the iPad to connect with each other. However, the times it does work, it feels like absolute magic and it's definitely worth experimenting with if you're interested in using your iPad as a second screen to maybe take notes on the side or quickly search for stuff on the web. There is also the sidecar feature which effectively extends your Mac's display onto the iPad. However, I find that for my own workflow, it tends to be a bit overkill, which is why I generally prefer to use universal control instead. Now, one trick I discovered very recently was that if you're a heavy user of Apple's built-in productivity apps like Notes and Pages, you can actually customize the toolbar at the top to show different shortcuts that you use on a regular basis. And for iPad models that support Apple intelligence, you also have this icon at the top that will load up Apple's writing tools. So this will let you do things like summarize the text. You know, we can also ask it to reword or make changes to the tone or any other changes that suit our liking as well. Next up, rather than loading up the secondary keyboard when typing in numbers and extra characters, you can just swipe down on the primary keyboard to add them in. And finally, we have my absolute favorite tip, which is connecting your iPad to an external monitor. For me personally, this is a feature that I use all of the time, mainly because I'm using an 11 inch iPad model and you don't really get a whole lot of screen real estate to multitask on the 11 inch. So it just makes sense for me to connect this thing to a monitor whenever I'm doing any sort of productivity related tasks. Now, one thing to note is that this feature is only available on M series iPads. I have already made a separate video covering how to make the most of stage manager and external monitor support on the iPad. But yeah, highly recommend you guys give this feature a go if your iPad model supports it. Of course, it might not fit everyone's workflows. You know, everyone has their own way of doing things, but I think it's still highly worth experimenting with. So that's a quick list of some of my favorite tips and tricks for iPadOS that I use on a regular basis. I have tried to keep this video iPadOS specific, but if any of you are interested in more general iOS tips, then I do have a separate tips and tricks video 
covering all of that, which you can click somewhere above here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for the next one.